And we say greetings, this is Kabanka Pyramid representing the Lion Voice and Vlog. Make sure that them check it out and stay tuned. See? Rastafari blessings every time. Okay. I see, I see. The fittest, fittest of the fittest shall survive. My people, people, open your eyes. Wake up. Blessed love, this is Queen Omega representing for all lions and lionesses. With the lion's voice, we come to tell our story. Rastafari, live it. Hey, hey, the lion's voice, Rastafari. Is this a distraction from World War III that is happening? There are protests rising on college campuses, so the upper class youths, they might rise up against uh, the alleged genocide in the Middle East. Wagwan, you understand? And hip hop is quiet. And everyone knows the most powerful, influential culture when it comes on to the youth. The number one genre, if we're looking at the numbers, is hip hop. So if hip hop take up uh, the cause of the Palestinian, it's very detrimental to the Israeli um, government, the United States um, current ruling government. So these are all things that are happening. Everything is intertwined. So it's all part of the larger story, the larger narrative. So even though tonight we're going into the music industry, um, family, just know that it's all relevant to this, this beautiful Alma Gideon mosaic that's being painted. If, uh, you should be watching this like a movie, family, what's happening on earth right now. Because I tell you, it's really exciting how the thing is unfolding um kendrick attacked the man father father um skills in euphoria you say you'd wake up your youth and tell him how to pray how to be a good man how to consider what the almighty considering he had a word back and forth you don't know nothing about that you don't know nothing about that all i taunt the man you know in the song it's very interesting. I am um, as a lyricist, and Kendrick does all of the different voices. And Drake came forward and said, "Wait, my youth, you beat your woman, and you probably are carry some jacket round it too." You know what I mean? So Drake fire back some terrible shots. So you know it's it's unfortunate that the family is being dragged in, but in a battle, this is what happens. There's no hold barred. However, it's bringing up these ugly scars in the black community because domestic violence is real in the black community. You know, um, infidelity is real in the black community. The fact that um, the fetishization of the black woman is real. In the That's the people first choice. Lion voice, make the lioness them feel nice. Lion voice, be the lion cubs we sacrifice. Lion voice, got to show the people them the life. Well, lion voice. Yeah. McGillian. Cataclysmic forces. Could be for evil. Yeah, for the ghetto youth, worldwide I see the youths, nowadays they growing up Wanna know the truth, they wanna know what's up They got no fear now, they call you bluff They asking questions cause they had enough Why? Some got stray cause times is tough Some walk with the machine, ready to bust All my goody red things get dangerous no, 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 the ghetto things get dangerous On the battlefield things get dangerous Them carry RPG, M16 Got a problem to wipe out your whole team For American dream, them get scanned and lost Them put us into the ghetto, try to abandon us Cause we the remnant of the first sons of Kush Warrior tribes, we not the ones to push Just look into them history, see we rebellious That's cause them systems so unjust Take the shackles and chains, change them to handcuffs Release your physical frame, them want your brain Them a vampire looking for blood to drain High this as you come and break every chain Bob Marley tell them, now we tell them again, yo we tell them this ain't a game, but this a armor to the end, you got a mentally train. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, but this is heaven on earth, hard go burn in the flames. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, I say I gotta play your hate, cause some things gotta change. I tell them this ain't a game, but this a time for African people to rise. I tell them. 
Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Eilid Selassie the I. Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziru Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Charles Match Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan African Happy Man. I'm a creative industry attorney, I'm an artist, I'm an author, I'm an actionist, and right now I am the host of the Lion's Voice. Welcome to the Lion's Voice and welcome to the Lion Voice Network where the lions and the lionesses are telling our own story. Tonight we have a very special episode uh, to all of the Lion Pride, the Lion Pride on Patreon, Generation X and above. This is not your day, this is not your episode. I'm talking to the young millennials and Generation Z in this episode because we're going to address this massive hip-hop battle that's happening Kendrick Lamar versus Drake What a war in a Babylon We're going to talk about it from a couple of uh, angles and I'm going to give five reasons why this is an important um, historical cultural milestone Remember I deal with the creative industry um, and I'm also an artist, so these things have particular interest for I and I. I have to uh, watch them. And I know some of the my, my elders, because a whole heap of my elders watch this channel. And they may say, what is a Kendrick Lamar and who is a Jake and what, you know. Um, still watch because it's good to keep in tune with what the young people are going with. Um, I have to remind myself that these are youths, um, but they're touching some topics that I think are going to be historical in terms of the evolution of the art form of hip hop. Um, they're bringing some darkness to the fore, to the light, and we're gonna we're gonna go in it. Um, all of that. Also, is this a distraction from World War Three that is happening? There are protests rising on college campuses, so the upper class youths them are rise up against uh, the alleged genocide in the Middle East. Well, one. You understand? And hip hop is quiet, and everyone knows the most powerful, influential culture when it comes on to the youth. The number one genre, if we're looking at the numbers, is hip hop. So if hip hop take up uh, the cause of the Palestinian, it's very detrimental to the Israeli um, government, the United States um, current ruling government. So these are all things that are happening. Everything is intertwined. So it's all part of the larger story, the larger narrative. So even though tonight we're going into the music industry, um, family, just know that it's all irrelevant to this, this beautiful Armageddon mosaic that's being painted. If, uh, you should be watching this like a movie, family, what's happening on Earth right now. Because I tell you, it's really exciting how the thing is unfolding. Um, I had tell the item and also making preparation, you know, don't just sit and consume and watch, but ensure that you're making uh, preparations and that you are adjusting yourself and your family on the chessboard um, of what is happening on earth. So we're going to, again, we're going to get into um, the Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. For those who may not be familiar, I'm going to give you um, a listing of songs that this um, current battle outlines so that we have a context where we are dealing with. Cause when I found out about it, you know, I went forward and I did my research coming and I listened to this music um, in a real life, to be honest. You know, but I respect Drake. Growing up in Canada, I never hear about Drake. You know, after I was in the US, it's a younger virgin. But the Bridging has really put Toronto on the map, you know, um, made Toronto a different city in terms of international exposure and, you know, the interest. So we have to respect the work with the Bridging put in Drake, may I talk, uh, making songs for the ladies. His music is not um, I and I music. However, I respect, you know what I mean, the, the work where he put in. Um, he does R&B, he does hip hop. A lot of things, you know, he has a gallus image. He, he's done a lot of work in Jamaica. Everybody know about the link with Popcorn. So Drake is someone who 
uh, lean to the Caribbean side because Toronto, that's just the culture. So when you hear Drake, you know, using some um, Jamaican uh, slang and thing, that's not him necessarily being inauthentic. It's because he's from Toronto and that's just how Toronto culture is orchestrated. You know, Jamaican is the dominant culture for the young people. You know what I mean? Even from my time, that's how Toronto um, was set up. So Drake is there. Then Kendrick Lamar is a Pulitzer Prize winning rapper, you know. He does socially conscious rap. I love some of his rap. King Kunta, you know what I mean? Him of, uh, we gonna be all right, you know. He, he's talking about the struggle. He just released a project, Mr. Morale, looking at the problems in the black family and, and trying to shine a light, you know. So he would be more on the cultural side. Not every Kendrick song. We deal with you know but we respect what he represents he's also from the inner city from Compton from a blood neighborhood so you know I mean he's he's lived and seen the um, effects of tribal war because when we talk about bloods versus crip we're talking about the tribal war we're talking about Igbo versus Yoruba we're talking about Tigray versus Amhara it's the same struggle globally so um, that's Kendrick Lamar, you know, um, California rapper. He has the crown for the West Side, representing the West. Well, uh, he's also with his high school sweetheart. You know, they're not married as far as I know. His queen, light skin, um, sister, and very idolful, you know, and presents that family projection. And this is all relevant because of the topics that are brought up in the battle. So I'm laying the, the ground of who these two public personas are. Drake is all about party. Drake never talk about a cause in his life. He never, you know, he's a product. Um, there are allegations against Drake that he has ghost writers, meaning that people are writing song for him uh, and these things. So Drake is you know, entity to himself. But when you look at Drake, it's a corporate machine. So he's not going to talk about religion. He's not going to talk about politics, nothing like that. Um, he's also half European Jew, half African-American. That is his lineage. So it's a very unique diaspora lineage that he, rep he doesn't represent the typical Canadian black youth in terms of his lineage, which would be just straight Caribbean. Um, lineage. Um, so these are all very interesting points when it come on to the battle. So these are the songs that um, this battle pertains to. It pertains to, uh, I start at uh, First Person Shooter. This is a collaboration with Drake and Kendrick Lamar where they introduce a concept called the Big Three, which is supposed to be Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and um, J. Cole, which is um, the, the, the three biggest rappers of the millennial generation, you know, all of them platinum, um, millions of records, fan base, anytime them drop a beer things, you know. So they introducing this concept of the big three. Kendrick Lamar is not there. Um, you can hear from Drake last verse. It's, it's a legend of beef that Drake reached out for Kendrick to be on the song. Regin, obviously never go up on the song so the last verse have a little spiciness in it you know and maybe Drake has fire some subliminal um shot over to Kendrick so the next song come out is a song called like that uh, Metro booming you know um funky track nice track when you hear the lyrics you can if you're a pan-african you, you know what I mean the the it's inappropriate let's just say that you know for a conscious person However, for the youth, them, they love it. Um, but Kendrick Lamar comes on, he's not even talking about what the song I talk about. He's just talking about he's the best. He said, no big tree, I just theme thing around the place, you know? So, shot fire right there, so. And he said, first person shooter, all these things. So, in fire two shot right there, so. No. The next song after that, no, Jake respond. No, Jake, first, J. Cole respond with seven minute drill on his album, you know, and fire two shot after Kendrick, same album, them I put people to sleep and certain vibration. And then now 
ironically J. Cole said that he couldn't sleep after him do that and him go up on stage and he apologize. You know, he apologize and say, take me out of this. Um, you know, I, this is not what my soul. And that's also relevant because I show you, say, he really a deal with some higher heretical vibration, J. Cole. I, of, of the three of them, I like J. Cole the best. J. Cole have a song called Last Ones. If you haven't seen that song, go Google that song about teenage pregnancy. And from I heard that song, I say, yeah, man, that youth, yeah. I got the powerful things and I see him locks up, um, beard up himself and thing. And I, I present that kind of far eye essence, although he probably hasn't encountered far eye within a real way. But, you know, the, the, the earth and the vibration of the earth are draw the youth them to locks up and beard up themselves as in the ancient times so you know i always respect him but even get a vibes on him said no man, come out of this so seven minute drill for kendrick um, we have a little pause i go on and then jake drop a song called push-ups address kendrick directly and you know the whole industry everybody excited now because jake you know they know jake from different battles meat mills push a t jake always come out and make some song where people can dance when I'm at this the same time so push-ups come out now and then it's having an impact out there and people are asked if Kendrick are re go respond then Drake drop a next song called Taylor Made with a Snoop Dogg Tupac AI and I'm probably gonna do a Lion Law episode about this because the use of AI you know we start dealing with intellectual property image and likeness um the voice um mark you know the and and the estate of tupac came out and sent a cease and desist but basically the song was tupac and snoop expressing disappointment how kendrick hadn't responded to the drake song push-ups and push-ups you know drake had disembowed him height made some allegations that his wife there was some infidelity you know what i mean and one bag of things in other song. So this was taking place, and then now um, the Snoop, I'm sorry, the two packers say yes. Um, sent a cease and assist. Drake took it down. Um, so that's two songs. Drake fire back back to back against Kendrick. Then Kendrick come out with a song called Euphoria. Shake up the place. Some people never like it, um, but in that song now Kendrick. You know attacking drake um with some warning don't take it to the family don't go there so because if you go there so you're not gonna like it and you know what i mean before that song settle um you drop a next song called 616 and again warning don't go there so you have a spy in your camp drake you know you talk about street this and street that and you have spies where I deal with you, you know what I mean? And then now, Drake drop a song called Family Matters, you know, where skating, gone into Kendrick family life, alleged that the man a beat him wife, you know, alleged that the man a deal with white girls secretly and a hide, you know, that him secretly, you know, a try, you know deal with white people for boost him self-esteem and him just want to be the black person in the room these are serious issues that we have in our community that drake brought to light but shortly probably a couple of minutes after drake dropped that song family matters kendrick drop a song is a nuclear bomb called uh, meet the, meet the grams and him dissect drake from a psychological perspective you know dismantle the whole gallus thing set over sexualizing black woman you don't like woman you know you have a beard a, a legend saying it might go there that way there you know it was a, it's, you know so all of this is happening in the hip-hop world um so i'm gonna talk about you know this is just to set the the groundwork for why i think this is relevant to the pan-african rastafari um discussion that we're having and again we have to ask is this a distraction you know from world war three to keep the hip-hop because all of these artists are controlled by 
mega companies, mega when you look on label. These are not your little independent artists where I run up and down. So everything has to go through a process, you know? So the question is, is this um, being orchestrated at this particular time? Or, or is this, or we don't have to say, because maybe it's happen naturally, but is this being greenlit by, you know, because some of these songs are coming out on the digital service providers on the Spotify, so they're, they're doing commerce. This is not just, you know, at first they were leaking the songs, but, you know, these are now being uploaded on the DSPs. These are doing numbers. These are driving a discussion in the industry. I also have to do special honorable mention to Rick Ross, drop a diss track to Champagne Tarts. But because him is a side show, him, never, him thing never get um, discussed, you know, more than a little bit. But the main event, Kendrick versus... Drake and then J. Cole taking himself out to see where it's gone because it's gone very dirty right now into the family life. Um, J. Cole Irits remove him because he was not on that. He truly, I think, is trying to be a man on a mission. Although he talks that he's the greatest MC and when him lyrics him when him drop him lyrics him talk like him could have defended it. So it hurt him to come out of this. But in the long run, I think he'll be vindicated. And this is why it's important to follow your irates, even if it don't make sense in the moment. You know, J. Cole is, is living that and demonstrating that. So on so many levels, family, I think this is so relevant to dealing with I and I young people today. Um, so before I get into the nitty gritty, let me just big up Lion Pride. Uh, we are less than... Uh, 30 away from 2,500 um, subscribers. What a journey it's been. You know, big up all of the Lion Pride that have been with us from less than 100 subscribers. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, you're asking, what is the Lion Pride, Bridget? We are talking about. If you subscribe to the Lion Voice Network, that means you press the subscribe button on YouTube and you become a subscriber. If you subscribe, you are part of the lion pride so we're building a movement here uh, for the lions and the lionesses to tell our own story this is a rastafari pan-african channel unapologetic um, with the message um, unapologetic with the blackness unapologetic we love everyone but we're unapologetic we're building the root here on the lion voice because the root has been damaged and this is what we're going to talk about with this beef um, although we are um, ital, plant based, but this is beef. But we are going to talk about it because, again, it's uncovering some of the trauma that we have faced since the transatlantic holocaust, you know, um, the Mayafa. You know, we are a people um, that was exiled. We are a people that are just coming to grips with, with what has um, would our ancestors survive, you know, and the trauma that has been passed from generation, generational curses were just coming out of that. So I have to big up the Lion Pride. And then I have to big up the Lion Pride on Patreon. 14 fire angels come together and have put uh, their financial weight behind their support for the Lion Pride channel. Big up. Uh, we are pushing the $25 level right now. So if you can afford $25 a month to come in and support Rastafari Independent Non-Aligned Media, we give thanks. Um, if you watch the live that we just had with Rastatarchi, you would see that we now have our branding. We took the duck, which was the StreamYard logo, off of the, 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 the corner of the screen, and we have upgraded to the professional level. That is being paid for by the Lion Pride on Patreon. So we're building a community and we're going to be reinvesting in the platform. We had the little bossy chain. You know, you can scroll across the, 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 the person being interviewed information. We'll eat more features with the upgraded StreamYard. So if you watch the lives, you'll be seeing some of those upgrades that we 
have added our watermark so no more loosey goosey we talk about it here the rastafari man standard when i bun loosey goosey so we took the stream yard duck off of the screen and now we have the lion talk uh, live branding there so we're investing we want to get new cameras we want to travel uh, to do more in-person interviews and exclusive tours i still have content from jamaica we're going to be doing a little mini uh documentary on rastafari indigenous village i, I had a tour when i was in jamaica holy for content we want to be able to hire an editor we want to step up this thing i still work full-time as an attorney so i cannot uh, do to this network what I want to do but the lion pride on patreon they see the vision and they're with I so I'm asking the item to join you can't afford the $25 come in at the $10 the $5 level we want a world-class platform that's catering to Rastafari and our pan-african family we want to see animation we want to see feature films we want to see everything relating uh, a news program we want to see everything related to how Rastafari worldview you know because it's isla and it's nice and we love it and we big up ourselves and we also have to do what every other community is doing because every other community has their media that they run through so they cannot be cancelled their their way of thinking their worldview cannot be cancelled and that's so important if you're depending on other people platform to get out our messages and to tell our story then we can be cancelled because we didn't take the time to build our own um, so this is what we're doing here at the lion voice network this is your first time here thank you move over to the patreon support the platform uh, big up Romeo king design ras lidge rastafari bridge and women know um, you know what i mean and this is his product he's supporting he's part of the lion pride on patreon also a sponsor of the channel we're pushing his product so make sure you you get it hot or cold liquid this thing and he has every caribbean island it, it probably can do the african countries if you want get the african countries and trust me i'd go everywhere with this thing so big up ras uh ledge big up cmos life we're getting ready to fall what are you in cmos life i spoke to the owner wally kings he's getting ready ras woolley um to bring forward he took a, a, a time where uh, getting ready to upgrade CMOS and get it in the store so stay tuned we're gonna have some updates I'm gonna bring on the bridge to talk about this this is a, a best CMOS drink I've ever tasted and one of the things we have to do is now start bringing the products to the people so the bridge took time invested in the branding he's going through all of the steps to bring a nationally recognized CMOS brand to the fore and we're going to talk about it here on the lion voice network um it's, it's amazing to see the bridge and drive and vision uh so big up cmos one of our sponsors here uh this is a community funded channel so we talk about what we want to talk about family um so uh that being said also remember we do have Ailey Selassie's ethiopia volume one the rise of the priestly warrior king the epic story of the birth of lich tafari we're getting ready to start working on volume two. We started working on the soundtrack as well. I'm going to be doing a soundtrack for volume one and volume two, all original music. So stay tuned uh, for that. Um, so that is what's happening. You see the Reading Ras merch. Uh, we're making this bigger than Air Jordan. Make sure you get your Reading Ras Rastafari. I read a book, physical reading of books. And um, we want to take it to the world this is what we represent i am the reading ras all right so housekeeping out of the way let us get into the topic of kendrick lamar versus drake what a whoa all right people first and foremost um the first thing i i thought when i saw this uprising and the big back and forth on the internet is this a record label orchestrated distraction to uh you know enthrall the black community so that they don't see the atrocities taking place in the gaza strip or they don't start addressing these atrocities of their music because hip-hop is the largest genre once hip-hop pick up a cause you can pretty much call it a rap um so that was my first thought and so i said boy man them away 
and then now when i look into the whole vibration i say you know what um we came goddess up middle east because of so much that we're dealing with internally as a community this look like it's a good thing because the conversations that it's bringing up um are needed conversations in the community the attacks that the bridge and them are attacking each other ultimately is leading us to an examination of the black experience black culture um, black identity and um, black family these are all things and that's why you know it's such an important topic for the lion voice network that we address this topic so i'm going to give five reasons why kendrick lamar versus jake is uh, important to address for the rastafari pan-african community or why it's important for us to uh look at this uh, number one reason is um that it's addressing black culture so kendrick lamar main attack on drake is that drake only highlights the negative aspects of black culture the performative you know drake is the gallus the womanizer drake is the gangster you know his affiliation with jay prince and some real gangster down in texas jay prince jr his son you know they're more behind the um uh, scarface um uh, i can't remember the name of the group right now uh, but it'll come to eye uh, but scarface you know and willie d uh, bushwick bill uh ghetto uh sitting on that um write it down in the comments family um i i, I just have a mental blank on the name of the um uh, of the name of the group but jay prince them are some real gangs and they back drake so you had more time jake would talk some gun talk he grew up in suburban uh toronto with his white jewish mother so and he was an actor on the grassy junior high so we can safely say although he did get shot on the the grassy junior high man boss a shot after my little white you however we can safely say drake is not a gangster raised person kendrick lamar on the other hand is from compton from a blood area who real gangster that are his dna but he doesn't glorify or talk about gunting in his music you know um he's more trying to lead the people to the consciousness so his attack on drake is you know this black culture that you're you're bringing to the people you know you're just bringing the toxic um acidic parts of the culture to the people and really that's not you you know um so having that discussion about what is black culture and what is being fed to us by these multinational corporations that are not uh you know would never um green light this type of content to their own communities why is it okay to green light it to the black community death and destruction irresponsibility drug use you know um abundant when you listen to low frequency um the promotion of concubine harlot culture you know what i mean um prostitution these are the things that our youths are consuming within hip-hop we remember in the late 80s with x clan and um brand nubians and all of these when hip-hop was going conscious how they cut it off with gangster rap you know funding nwa and bringing in that wave of gangster rap um to just stop that um black uprising um and never was funded at the same level again so again that's why we big up ones like j cole kendrick lamar that lean more to the conscious side so the attack against kendrick lamar and drake is basically it's an attack on that party that low frequency music fighting against the conscious so it sets up that um battlefield for these things to clash musically and remember music is associated with spirituality this is why i always talk about the soundtrack for repatriation this is why i ask the artists when they come on here where are the songs about his majesty where are the songs about repatriation because once the music is glorifying and ringing out there it's connecting physical and it's part of the whole metaphysical landscape so music is crucial um for that so um that's number one is that um we're 
bringing up these uh, conversations addressing black culture particularly for the millennials and generation z which is everybody under 40 basically um now the other thing about it is uh number two is black identity you know um rick ross start called drake a white boy you know kendrick lamar also alluding to um his culture how many black features until you feel that you're black enough that was a lyric for kendrick launch upon him so we're talking about black identity the um, biracial struggle um, all of these things are being addressed and these are um, themes that are not openly addressed enough in black communities so it's opening the door for discussions on what is the black identity what does it represent uh, number three is that it's addressing the black family so Drake attacked the man no um, Kendrick attacked the man father father um, skills in euphoria you say you wake up your youth and tell him how to pray how to be a good man how to consider what the Almighty considering he had a word back and forth you don't know nothing about that you don't know nothing about that all I taunt the man you know in the song it's very interesting I am as a lyricist and Kendrick does all of the different voices and so talking about the man's father in Drake came forward and said wait my youth you beat your woman and you probably will carry some jacket around it too you know what I mean so Drake fire back some terrible shots so you know it's it's unfortunate that the family is being dragged in but in a battle this is what happens there's no whole bar however it's bringing up these ugly scars in the black community because domestic violence is real in the black community you know um, infidelity is real in the black community the fact that um, the fetishization of the black woman is real in the black community some man just love pum pum them don't love woman this is a reality you know and he's accusing Drake of being one of them there you know and a predator basically who has no good intention for people daughters and there are some men out there and we have to be careful because that's where the gallus life can lead you that's one of the reasons why I had to denounce that life because it lead you into a life of not caring causing trauma in the community because you are investing people's hearts and breaking hearts and you know most of the gallus them have to lie to keep up this multiple woman lifestyle and this is what we're seeing um so them attacking each other on this is bringing these ugly characteristics to light allowing for the conversations because it don't feel good i know for either bridging to have their what is hidden and this is the modern battle back in the day the rappers didn't have so much access to information but this is part of the revelation you know everything coming to light because these men are doing research people are informed on them within their own team there's one bag of something so all of these allegations and of course they're allegations but now they come in the public your darkest secrets around family and would as she say if they had been living a good family life man them wouldn't have not just about them negative so it's addressing black family bringing these conversations to light number four um again it comes to the darkness to the light so because none of them are walking that path allegedly you know um the righteous path there's so much that people can say about them negative about what they're doing in the dark um but this is all coming to light so for the youth that are watching this you know they can see that what what does it work to gain the world and lose your soul you know um when this darkness can be exposed so i'm hoping i'm praying that this is part of the healing because we have to acknowledge these things before we can heal from them and i hope both artists will make some music addressing you know um their healing from this or their attempt to adjust because these are putting things in the minds of some of their fan base i mean the fan base is there but i think the consensus is kendrick is winning right now because of that strategic movie he took the gas out of drake's family matters song with this psychological attack and analysis about drake 
whole family and meet the grams. You know, this is the culmination of um, this darkness to the light and alleging, you know, how he hypersexualizes women. And when you look at Drake or how he moves to, it's kind of disturbing, you know, from a man of his age um, and his success. However, um, again, we're praying that that is one of the impact. And either way, it's important because, again, the conversations or the true conversations that it allows. Um, I'm having these conversations or true conversations with my youth, then become my youth, then are listening and you know we're breaking down the lyrics together with the youth them and enough time the youth them have to tell me what I go on I don't know what's happening is the youth them I tell I and but it allows I to interact with I'm on youth in a way that you sell them you know and have them engage and we can get into the theory and them I ask I questions and I can break down so from that perspective um, and, and that is what I would say number five and the most important reason is is the conversation that it is, uh, this allows us to have with our young people as parents or as grandparents um, having a knowledge of this battle that's happening and going into the lyrics if you're a lyrics man like myself has really allowed I to connect with I and I youth on a level and to talk about these important parts that are necessary for the healing of the black community for us to go to this next phase which is the great exodus you know this is the repatriation that's um, about to take place has never been seen in creation in conjunction with the falling of babylon these are things that are written uh, revelation 18 you see come out over my people we're in that phase right now and part of coming out of her is coming out of the trauma, coming out of the sins, coming out of the shame, bringing these things to the light so that they, the sunlight can hit them and the cure can be procured. So that's just Iron Man Sound, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake Itaguan. Biggest thing right now in a popular culture. Is it distracting from a genocide? Is it... Uh, being orchestrated to to distract from world war three unfolding um the armageddon which has un which has already begun nato getting ready for war with russia um the arab countries turkey has just cut um trade with with israel unprecedented you know everything on the brink but kendrick and drake are war over here so and black people are that you know that is the pre so is it a distraction um what did i miss is it a benefit am i talking foolishness let us take the conversation into the comments remember when you comment you tell the algorithm to share it with more and more ones so let us have the conversation in the comment section what are your thoughts who is winning i say right now kendrick lamar is winning this struggle on wax drake has to respond I'm hoping that they will use this to evolve themselves and their message on wax. Is it likely? Probably not. They probably keep going lower till the two of them just burn up in a hell. But I'm hoping that they will take this and now use it as an elevation through music. Um, because this is the soundtrack of the uprising and uh, this deso is where the community is to destroy this era of hip hop. I'm hoping that this is, we're looking at a rebirth. So let us see drop the comment let us have the conversation and this is the type of dialogue we have here this is your first time watching this is the type of reasoning that we have here is a rastafari pan-african reasoning this is how we talk about popular culture over here you like it subscribe and remember that the time has come for the lions to tell our own story and this is the lion's voice Lion voice Yeah, I'm a Gideon. Got a cosmic forces. Good over evil. Yeah, for the ghetto youth. Worldwide. Yeah. I see the youth. 
nowadays they growing up Wanna know the truth, they wanna know what's up They got no fear now, they call you bluff They asking questions cause they had enough Why? Some got stray cause times is tough Some walk with the machine, ready to bust All my goody red things get dangerous No need to get though things get dangerous On the battlefield things get dangerous Them carry RPG, M16 Got a problem to wipe out your whole team For American dream, them get scanned and lost Them put us into the ghetto, try abandon us Cause we the remnant of the first sons of Kush Warrior tribes, we not the ones to push Just look into them history, see we rebellious That's cause them systems so unjust Take the shackles and chains, change them to handcuffs Release your physical frame, them want your brain Them a vampire looking for blood to drain Highly sick, as you come and break every chain Bob Marley tell them, now we tell them again, yo we tell them this ain't a game, but this a armor to the young, you got a mentally train. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, but this is heaven on earth, hard go burn in the flames. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, but say I gotta play your hate, cause some things gotta change. I tell them this ain't a game, but this a time for African people to rise. I tell them, earthquake, hurricane, tornado, the wind blows and bring the rains. I got the whole west coast in flames, melt the arctic poles and flood the seas Hurricane force winds blow down the trees, whole earth feel the pain when the bombs release Read your psalms, release David prophecies, Mark Scarvey said look to the east Rastafari is the prince of peace, and Haile Selassie I come conquer the peace yo. They trap the youths with them luxuries to get the ladies, gotta drive Mercedes People killing babies, try to keep us down with AIDS We descended from these, now we surround with plagues, man I kill them brother I'm to drive the escalates I can't stand Babylon and all the mess they made Teach the youths that them best when them rest in the grave Wolf trick the lion, got the lion a shape Can't reach bones, I unless you learn to behave Got to stand firm, cause these is perilous days I tell them